At some point, you have got to say it's just deliberate. I cannot, I just, I can't believe this. So Sniffy Joe is going to allow the ethanol subsidies to, or subsidies, the ethanol percentage in your gas to be 15% under the guise of fighting climate change. This is going to have a significant impact on everything from gas prices to price of food. This is on top that's going to increase CO2 as well. This is freaking insanity. And that you can't, at some point, that they just want us to be pain, be filled pain. I, I don't know how else you can say this. So here's some Reuters exclusive Biden administration retroactively raised ethanol blending volumes for 2021 to 15%. All right, so I'm not going to read you that whole thing, but you can see this is Dateline June 1st. And Reuters, that right wing rag, right? So let's check this out. This is back in April, Biden to waive ethanol rule as inflation hits four decade high. Yep. President Biden said he will suspend the federal rule barring the sale of higher ethanol blends of gasoline during the summer months. Uh, he visited an ethanol plant in Iowa. <laughs> Most gasoline in the U.S. is blended with 10%. Uh, but Biden's going to allow Sniffy Joe under emergency protection. Under emergency order, he's going to permit the sale of gas using a 15% ethanol blend. Yeah, interesting. Uh, administration said the higher uh, blend will save the drivers an average of 10 cents per gallon. I'll show you that's just stupid. Uh, but critics say the order would offer uh, would offer drivers already affected by high gas prices lower grade fuel in order to boost, boost federally subsidized ethanol producers. I can show you why it's just they're not going to save any money. Global food crisis approaching, and Sniffy Joe wants burning more food for fuel. Yep. Uh, by the way, ethanol only increases gasoline prices. Less efficient and requires special blending. We'll talk about that here in just a second. From oilprice.com, what does Biden's new ethanol mandates mean for you? Expect higher food prices, but little relief at the pump. In fact, it'll be the exact opposite. Uh, the oil industry must blend 250 million more gallons of renewable fuel both this year and next after a federal court found that Obama administration inappropriately reduced the blending requirements. The agency also denied roughly 70 exemptions for small refineries, many of which have been granted under uh, former President Trump. All right, so this is going to be safe. So we, we can see all that. Let me just pause it. Foreign futures going back to five years. You can see flat, 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 boom, boom. All right, so that's fantastic. The price of corn is going up. Price of corn futures going up because we're using corn to put in your gas tank when we have a huge inflation on the food front. That makes sense. Of course, farmers cheered that 100%. So let's keep looking. A dumb idea or a crime? Yeah, it's a, a dumb idea and a crime. Expand use of ethanol is a poor answer to high gas prices and refusal to recognize the failures of the additive. Uh, Reuters described the president's actions as a win for the corn lobby, but all others will be the losers. Shortcomings of ethanol as an alternative to gas have been reported continually for 15 years. Even Al Gore said that was a mistake. The additive has been touted as a way to reduce emissions of carbon dioxide. But yet this guy, a UN human rights advocate, Gene Ziegler, said, it's a great danger for the right to food by the development of biofuels. It will be paid, the price will be paid by hundreds of thousands of people who will die from hunger. 100%. I completely agree. A year later, this guy said the uh, diversion of food crops to fuel production is a crime against humanity. Or she, Gene, I'm not sure if it was he or G. Uh, in 2011, a guy wrote, or a lady, iron law of supply and demand dictates that ethanol production would almost unavoidably increase food prices. Yep. And exasperate, exacerbate pro uh, poverty. Uh, he calculated almost 200,000 excess deaths have resulted from switching to uh, ethanol, fuel, food to fuel. Uh, we got my hit right here, Engineering Explained. Uh, I forgot the guy, Jason over at Engineering Explained. We can look at this. His and Jason's uh, very big on EVs, electric cars and whatnot. And I like, I've been following Jason for a long, long time. It's actually funny watching his old videos because he was just a skinny kid in his basement with horrible lighting. And now look at him. Anyway, so he did this video three months ago, and I just Hello thought that was interesting. Because I'll, I'll link to his show notes, because I said, I think I watched that. And sure enough, I did. Look, I had the last most recent comments. Monoculture, pure stupidity. Monoculture, agriculture, pure stupidity. CO2, mind you, is a fertilizer. That's why they say sing to your plants. Not because your voice is so good, but because you breathe out CO2. CO2 is actually a fertilizer. It's a nutrient. Anyway, I'll put a link in the show. Would you stop? Buddy, kill me. Kill me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do a video here, bud. Let's say hello. Hi. Can you say hello to everybody? There he is. Hey, Pablo. All right. So, oh, yeah. Look, you like my breath? I just got done eating bacon and egg. It smells good, doesn't it? All right. So, the National Wildlife Federation, that right-wing group, uh, poses 
the renewable fuel standards because uh, expansion of croplands infringes on natural habitat. Yep. Uh, trade organizations, the dairy industry and bakeries have objected uh, because of pressures on corn and supplies, corn prices, supplies. Scores of organizations uh, representing millions of people have written support of the RFS renewable fuel standards reform. An expansion of the standards only promote promises more of the same, according to Wisconsin researchers. Our estimate imply that for every billion gallons per year expansion of ethanol, we would expect a 5.6% increase in corn prices. And we use corn in everything. Everything. Ugh. A 1.6 of 0.4% increase in areas of U.S. corn and cropland, respectively, and tenant increases in greenhouse gas, nutrient pollution, and soil erosion. Soil erosion. What's our biggest export? Our biggest export is topsoil. We're going to the Gulf of Mexico. And however many pennies uh, Sniffy Joe's ethanol expansion shaves off current prices, if any, the overall effect of the re renewable fuel standards is to increase the fuel cost by nearly 30 cents a gallon according to the Senate Committee on Environmental Public Works by a guy of the Energy Policy Research Foundation. Con contributing to higher fuel production costs have been increases in the price of credits that refiners have to pay if they don't add ethanol to their product. I was just looking at the price of credits are going through the roof. It's all one big scam, man. One big scam. A refiner in Philadelphia, Monroe Energy, has spent $1 billion on compliance for the renewable fuel standards Multiples more than the refinery's purchase price more annually than nearly all other operating costs combined. Credits that once cost a few cents are expected to go to more than $2, a difference of hundreds of millions of dollars annually for refineries like Monroe. Where do they get the money to pay for that? Oh, no big deal. Some smaller refiners have closed. <sighs> The intended result of this move is to lower prices at the pump, yet just 2,300 of the nation's 150,000 gas stations sell E15 gas, according to the White House. In addition, ethanol is less efficient than gasoline, reducing gas mileage, so it costs more consumer, consumers more than conventional gasoline on a per mile basis. In his testimony, this guy says, I'm not sure who this guy, we are heading into a largely uncharted world of enormous price and energy security risks. Epic failures, cost overruns, and the unexpected. Um, this is for, and my man Gregory Wrightstone, I follow him, he's a geologist and the director of the CO2 Coalition. Uh, this is freaking insanity, man. And I, I'm telling you, it's not because they're worried about climate change, it's because they know this is how, it's no different than funding Ukraine. This is how they grift they grift off this crap. Al Gore became a multi, multi, multi millionaire off this crap. It's no different than the Democrats who uh, raped Haiti with their telephone, their telecommunications stuff. It's, it's the same flipping thing. Look, Republicans are in on this too. Don't get me wrong. I don't know. We had in the Davos, Deb Fisher, uh, Dan Crenshaw was there, maybe not this last year, but a bunch of Republicans, a guy from Indiana. Red Davos. It's just, it's, it's complete fakery. And it's, uh, it's going to increase a, it. It's why you got to start growing your own food, man, because it's going to increase the cost without question of your, uh, of your consumption. No, never mind the destruction of the farmland, of the agriculture. The monoculture agriculture is a sin against humanity. It's a sin against God. And that's what we're doing with the ethanol crap. It's just, we're basically tearing up land. And the, if you go read that, watch that video that Jason did from Engineering Explained, what they do is they basically, they till, we, we all talk about in the uh, sustainable, regenerative uh, farming, uh, no-till farming. So they till, which, what does that do? It sends up all the CO2 from the soil into the atmosphere so they can plant corn, so they can take off that corn, not to eat, but to put it in your gas can. And how much does that cost to freaking refine? How much does it cost to, the, to grow, to, to harvest? Yeah, it's just a sanity, man. And so they, and then on top of that, how much are we losing in topsoil to the Gulf of Mexico? How much are we losing to monoculture agriculture? Ah, it's just, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And yet these guys are going to say they're green. Yeah. The green, when it comes to money, that's it. Freaking scumbags. We'll see you.